Hi, uh, welcome to What It Takes. My name is Amanshu, and uh, you know what? Uh, there is a community out there whom uh, who have kept a lot of people having a smile on their face. Somebody who is alone, they give a company such that they 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 have a feeling of awe in them, right? Uh, they have influenced so many people so far that a uh, few people can't even live without them. Who, which community which I'm talking about? None other than our dear pets, right? And uh, you know, uh, I've heard so many lovable stories so far that uh, if you if you leave them for a couple of days, they don't even uh, you know feed feed. They stop feeding. They even they miss so much. And you know, pets have become such an important uh, you know a piece of your life that a lot of people want to take care of them. And uh, you know, and and today I have invited someone uh, in my channel that uh, who has taken this responsibility in such a huge way uh, and helping such couples to bring smiles and uh, you know take care of those things uh, and uh, you know trust me uh, such kind of model a uh, business model has not only uh, brought happiness satisfaction. uh you know but also influenced a lot of people like that right and they are none other than from uh, uh you know i am and uh, i'm really glad to invite them uh, neeraj and devyani uh welcome neeraj and devyani hello. hello hello hi hi so uh, first of all uh, i'm glad i'm really happy to invite you on my channel and uh, you know uh, it's very nice feeling to have somebody from i am trust me <laughs> right <laughs> Well, there's only one from the I am here, and that is Neeraj. Oh, wow. I have I've done my PG in advertising and uh, public relations from Indian Institute of Mass Communication, Delhi. So it, yeah, so it does sound like an I I M C, whereas he did it from I am Calcutta. But I'm I'm just We're both from I am. So it's so yeah, it's like I am C dash C, and I'm from I am C. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. So you know what? Uh, we would, we would actually like to add value to so many people out there who wants to start something of their own. And uh, since you have, you guys have come up with such a unique idea uh, to serve so many families where nobody has even taken care of, right? Uh, not only we would like to learn from you what it took you guys to bring that kind of service as a business model, but also as a, you know. Uh, as a service to teach other people as well right so uh, let's let's start with your background guys so uh, why don't you let us know where you from way basically from and how did you what was your journey of, of thinking about doing something of your own well uh, let me start out and then you know big any can contribute to it uh, we are both uh, computer engineers sort of failed engineers where we didn't uh, really want to do the regular uh, uh, you know job in the corporate world uh, after engineering i went to uh, i am calcutta to explore finance and uh, various other things as they do at the iims where she went to the indian institute of mass communication and uh, of course after that uh, you know our paths crossed each other uh, we got married and then we had uh, this idea of roaming the whole of india uh and since our jobs allowed us to do that uh, so we kind of explored a lot of places uh, in india starting from uh, hyderabad we went to dehradun to stay for a year we went to goa to live for two years and uh, now we are here in uh, the beautiful town of kunnur uh, for the last uh, one and a half years uh, throughout this time you know uh, we have we had a pet of our own uh, he is a labrador a dog and uh, and we we faced a lot of trouble uh, you know traveling with him and uh, that's how you know the idea of uh, getting into uh, servicing people who kind of uh, face problems with their pets started out so yeah it's nice just a brief part you want to add to <laughs> yes, I have a lot to talk about it. Um, so, like you mentioned, I'm an uh, I'm an engineering graduate. I did my engineering in information technology and passed out in 2006 from BIT Pune. And 
Um, I, jo I joined a regular job in CGI in Bangalore. So I did a stint of about two years over there as a normal uh, quality assurance engineer. And I quit for some personal reason, you know. And after that, I tried doing something else. I quit on a whim actually. So I quit and then I thought, let me do something better. So when I uh, tried, I, I think I tried for about a few months. I didn't do really well in that. My savings were over. So I got back to another job in IT again in Bombay. I did a stint of about nine months again there. And then meanwhile, I was giving some entrance exams. Never tried the cat though. <laughs> and then I got through Indian Institute of Mass Communication. I did my uh, first graduation in advertising and public relations. And you know, like every engineer, and I'm talking this specifically for the young generation because I, I heard some of your past interviews and I know that that's, uh, or I, I, I feel you're doing this whole thing for the younger generation who want to step out and do something of their own, right? Yes. So um, it wasn't that I was unhappy in my job, but it's just that as soon as I passed out, I got a good salary. I was in a wonderful city and then I went shopping, you know, you earn good, you do everything. You go to the malls, you do this, you do that. And then suddenly you realize that your growth is not really much and something starts uh, kind of back of your mind you don't know what exactly it is and uh, that is what made me quit and then i realized my god the money that you get in it is really good and no other field can give you those kinds of privileges like an office with an ac the free coffee the kind of crowd the pick and drop and the whole jazz of being in the you know talking to the people laptops. in the states <laughs> i know we got yeah. the laptops and then you get all these downloaded movies so then <laughs> you know when you compare all those things are not there anywhere else mm -hmm. so i said okay i need to get back to it again you know so i got back to it and then again i realized but you know it's it, it's not something which was meant for me there are people who are good and they are good engineers you know i was one of those average engineers who did not know coding you know i did it but frankly you know the kind of our colleges don't teach you the ones that you require in the corporates right I mean, yeah i mean once you join a corporate you really have to unlearn and then relearn absolutely yeah, we were like a, i mean at least i was a blank slate because i understood almost nothing in my engineering and uh, so i think most of us who are not with that kind of a brain to pick up on coding or those kinds of technical things can't really be happy in those kinds of jobs so that's why I tried branching out and like you can make out I'm really a, a big talker or a good talking person and I wanted to be something so when I applied and I went to IMC the whole point is I thought coming from an engineering background I want to go into advertising you know there was that book welcome to advertising now get lost and then you right. watch these British Nandi and those kinds of people and then you look at those ads and movies and it's so much of a hype around it like you're going to be in the show business and you're in the advertising and you know all that kind of thing it kind of lured me that my life was going to change drastically now it's all going to be about those business suits and then uh, you know shootings and meeting the stars and coming up with some jingle or some kind of a um, punchline for a brand or something. So with that hope, I did go to the college and I, um, that is when we met actually, not that he was studying there, but we met online. <laughs> and then after I passed out, the kind of jobs those were offered in the, in the name of copywriting is for you to check the spellings for quite a few days, not days, for months or for years. You know? And then if, you, if you're lucky enough, you will move on to a brand label from something else to a brand label which, you know, which tells this was manufactured and the batch number is and this is and that is. And then I was like, my God, you know, my IT job was much better than what I'm doing now and um, all there is account servicing which I wasn't much interested in but that is a bit more fancier I would say then I thought let me become one of those designer guys you know I mean who does the designing and I had a fairly good you know skill set for doing that but then again the salaries that you get as a fresh pass out from these kinds of courses are anywhere between 5,000 to 15,000 so here I am a month okay and that is if you have passed out of a good college and you are lucky that you got a job in a good agency right otherwise you pay them for being an intern with them <laughs> that was like no I can't do that 
yeah you said something no no i'm acknowledging <laughs> yeah and then i was like this is not what i thought it is going to be right yeah. and i tried my hand at a very short like what script writing or something like that which was freelancing and i kind of had to write a couple of articles which were about some financial growth of some company and it was all heavy jargons and i had no idea of what those numbers meant or what it is i was only told you have to like kind of describe like the company has got so much and it's moving here and it's moving there of course i'm sure this was not a critical article or something and somebody would overlook it but here i am an it graduate who did something else and then did it was advertising and then i'm writing a finance article <laughs> and then i was like this just sounds wrong you <laughs> know this just sounds so wrong and um, so i didn't know what i want to do and i think i just got married there <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was the time i think our paths crossed and uh, you know then we then we got married in 2010 and uh, our son was born very soon after that mm-hmm. till that time uh, we were just uh, you know looking at each other and trying to wonder what should we do no, and, know, and what should we get and, so and you were you me. were already uh, you were that time in job itself uh, neeraj so i was working with a investment banking firm that firm was uh, based out of the us and uh, i worked as an analyst for them from here in india so my boss said that as long as you're online and i can catch you in the mornings and the evenings for a quick call uh i'm okay that you can move out uh, anywhere so that's when we decided to you know move to these b town cities and stay there and then probably uh, you know kind of explore the place around okay. uh so yeah i was working with 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 that firm uh i worked with them for about 4 years uh learned quite a lot you know my boss was quite a smart chap he was from harvard and oh, wow. uh, he taught me a lot of things uh, but then again you know somehow uh, it, it also meant that i wanted to explore more so uh, yeah i mean uh, after that the journey actually began and once uh, our son was born then we had at that time devyani had uh, taken a break actually from no no let me tell this part of this story. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you this so let me um uh, you know tell you so what happened was while so after i decided i'm not going to work mm-hmm. i did what every failed engineer does right he first tries for a corporate job i tried and then i quit and then i came back for the money then i said let me do one fancy pg and it's going to help me out and i got the pg and then i realized oh my god this job doesn't suit me or it's not as much money frankly the first trigger is always the money okay then i thought what do i do and in the meanwhile then i said let me try for these upsc exams you know so i went and i joined <laughs> the coaching classes and uh, yes uh, i i tried really i mean one for one year yeah that's not fair one actually thing. but i did do an attempt and then i realized oh my god this is too heavy for me i'm not that kind of a person and um, i probably didn't have what it takes to pursue that kind of study which meant i would not be able to pursue that kind of a career maybe i don't know so i gave it an attempt it didn't work and then uh, suddenly in between i realized my god i love nature i love this why don't i try for something which is indian forest services okay, mm-hmm. okay. and um, that's when neeraj had also decided he was working with cap gemini for some strategic consulting before that and he also missed he did work for infosys for 2 oh, years yeah. Yeah. oh wow oh okay yeah okay. i did work for after you my around what 6 years of experience and uh, there were any how many years of experience that you had so far so oh, let's forget two, about how many years which was 2 to 3 <laughs> oh wow okay okay and neeraj what we, you worked around 6 6 years or something like that before no, no, no. you took Definitely the job more than that we graduated oh. in, i graduated out of engineering in 2005 so that's oh. 15 years from now oh wow and, okay uh, she you guys don't look uh, as if you have passed out so back <laughs> come yeah, on yeah it was 15 years so after that i worked for 2 years at emphasis huh? as a you know a software engineer and then i went to iim calcutta that took 2 years and then after that yeah i've been working yeah and let me since, add you know let me add ten. that yeah. these two years or whatever our experience we got how much ever we crib about it or say it wasn't meant for me i think that added 
a lot, a lot of, to what we do. Yeah. Not that we work in a technical field or anything, but I got to see how a big corporate operates. How are the bosses? How are you supposed to lead? What kind of people I liked? What is the team structure? You know, all these tiny, tiny things. When you work in a big corporate, you do learn those. So I think it is very important, even if you're starting something of your own, you it, is, it is good experience. to work yeah with a nice firm for some time you know if you can and there are these two things so when i did advertising i did a very short stint in hyderabad with a, you know almost an unnamed agency or something like that for a short time but again what it adds is when you're in a small company you get to know the whole top to mm -hmm. down right you get to know everything about the organization how it works and you pick up on all the big words and everything but when you work in a bigger firm, you know, you are a very tiny part. There's not much you understand of the product or the whole process. But then you understand what is standardization or how a job must be done with more number of people or, you know, something to do with the structure, which I think adds on as simple a thing it's as a how, valuable experience. Yes, how to write an email. You know, when I graduated from engineering, I did not know how to write an official email or I did not even know how to make a good PowerPoint presentation. So these are the things maybe you are not making, but since you are attending those, or in fact a con call, like right now we are having a call. I wouldn't, you know, I, I can't say that I knew how to start it, how to end it, or those kinds of things. So I think that it's very important if you work for some time, it does add on. Oh, okay. So with all these thoughts, uh, you know, things were going here and there, but you still managed to streamline your thoughts towards doing something which which can actually, uh, you know, probably satisfy you and uh, give you a sense of, uh, you know, a reason to do something, right? So, how did you guys streamline those thoughts and come up with the company that you are running? So, what you, what you can share with us, first of all, what, what your company does, uh, what kind of service that we provide and uh, how did you streamline those thoughts to come up to this idea to implement in business model? Yeah, so I, I'll tell you what we do and then probably she is good at storytelling so she'll tell you the story. <laughs> okay, so we uh, we run uh, what is called as Possum. Okay, uh, the website's name is possum.in. Uh, uh, so we started out in 2016, uh, I think around Jan. And uh, the whole aim was to help people who have pets to relocate from one place to another. Uh, so for the first few first few years, it was uh, mostly within India. So we helped people to fly their their pets from uh, Bombay to Northeast, from Delhi to Chennai, all corners of the country. And then uh, slowly we got into international pet relocation. So now we, uh, uh, if we see, we have relocated pets to around 35 countries around the world. More than that. Wow. And uh, we are right now amongst the top three pet relocators in India. Uh, we are a part of uh, International Pet Relocators Association. Uh, yeah, so I mean, uh, that's what we do right now. So anybody who wants to take their pet outside of India or to bring it inside or within India itself, uh, most of them do, you know, come to us because uh, we are one of the most highly rated. Although we are slightly premium, but even then, uh, 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 pet parents who really want the top-notch service, they do come to us. So yeah, that's that's what we do. But how we got into it is a, a more interesting story which she did. <laughs> Actually, it was started by her. So she is the main entrepreneur. I am the sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> we have a CEO and uh, CXO. <laughs> yes. <All right. laughs> okay. So um, how we started it was, like Neeraj mentioned, uh, you know, reading all that heavy UPSC kind of things, I realized Gandhiji said that, you know, you must travel the length and breadth of India. Like there's so much to learn within the country. And I don't know why some things just, you know, it, it just catches your imagination or everything. And then we decided instead of moving abroad, because that was the time when we both had opportunities to go out of India and start working there. But while reading these books of Indian history, we realized that there is something which kind of pulls us back here, which is like very romantic idea that, you know, we want to be in India and we want to do something new here. We didn't know what, but that idea had already started. 
that we want to be in India and we want to be in India which is at a grassroots level. Okay, so we uh, decided we'll start with the travel which will help us to kind of think of what we want to do and what's needed. So we went to Dehradun and we went to Dehradun because for two reasons. One is the Forest Institute was there and I thought it would be good for me if I go and try studying. Yeah. The second point was there is also a new SEZ which was coming up that time. So we thought if we fail, we will always get a job in the BPO. Right, so our thought process always worked that we want to do something, but if it doesn't succeed, there were plan B's in place. So the plan B has to be there, right? And this plan B doesn't have to be very elaborate, but we had an optimistic plan B that you know a guy from an IIM and a girl who has done a post graduation from one of the premier institutes in India in mass communication. If we can't even get a job in a BPO, then who else will? Right? <laughs> Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and what do we need? Like, once you are out of, you know, the college, all you have is two boxes. Mm -hmm. So we had not really expanded much beyond those two boxes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I brought in my dog with me <laughs> at the time of marriage. You know, I always joke. They say in the north, ki char pai lao, and they didn't tell it had to be wheels. I got <laughs> four legs. You know, <laughs> so I got the dog, and we were traveling with the dog. So. All throughout, it was there in front of us, but we didn't think. So we both did go through the frustrating cycles of me going to the SEZs in Dehradun and trying to figure out if there is something that I can apply for a job or find out something like mm -hmm. a servicing to them. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, you know, it just wasn't. Then uh, our son was born. We moved to Goa because we couldn't really find much to do in Dehradun. We went to Goa. And then I said, now let me get back to a job. By then, I had already a break of two years. And when I started applying, I applied for everything. You know, I was just desperate to work. And I tried applying to advertising firms. I tried applying to the oh, IT firms. I tried applying to the BPO, to the news agencies. I applied to every goddamn company that was there in Goa, even in the construction industry. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I applied everywhere, and then the salaries were so bad. Like I quit my job before the post graduation at about something like a forty thousand a month. And now I was looking at seven thousand a month, which would not even cover my <laughs> travel expenses, right? So I then so I, harsh reality, okay. When once you take a break in the you know corporate, and if you want to get back into it into a different stream other than IT, uh, you will be faced with you know uh, taking a heavy pay cut and you know a different kind of a work culture. So yeah, folks who are looking out to you know go out there and change their streams, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, I mean it's really heartbreaking and frustrating because I feel when you take a break, you come back a little more organized because you've traveled, you've met different type of people, and now you know that you wasted so much of time in your first job. You know, you could have done much more than what you did when you were just a fresh, uh, you know, college pass out. So I tried explaining that to the employers that now actually I'm a more valuable resource. Because now I look at it from a different perspective, but it just doesn't sell. I don't know if it sells globally, but in Indian market, it doesn't sell. Um, so I thought I I was getting frustrated. So he suggested if it is only seven thousand a month, how about you start doing anything you like from home? Because if seven thousand is what you're going to earn in a corporate, then you might as well earn seven thousand for working from home. You know, work for yourself. At least you will get leaves whenever you want to get a leave, right? So he told me do something, and then we brainstormed, and we came up with what are our interests, and then we fixed up on sport. Right? He was interested in sports, so we said, okay, let's do something with sport. So I was as blank as that. I didn't know what I want to do. So we said, sports it is. We tried starting a newspaper, which is because I was in advertising, right? And uh, I knew friends who were journalists. So we said, okay, maybe we'll get help. So we always thought we had a neighbor who was an editor for Times of India. And we thought, let's take help from him, and then we'll be able to do it. So we tried, we conceptualized, got the name, everything for kids who are under 12 and who are going to be good sportsmen, right? Uh, so kind of to highlight them. So we thought that, but it didn't work out. And now when I look back at it, why it didn't work out was because none of us had the expertise, yeah. right? We were thinking that people have to help us, and we were frustrated that why isn't he telling us this? Why isn't he doing this? But now when I look back, it's like. He didn't owe us anything, right? To like get us started on something. So that was a frustrating thing. Then I started on something which was for kids activity center because 
woman uh, who has a young child it's but natural that you flow with it you know you see a lot of women running to teaching at the age when the kids are younger right so i tried doing that it was good everything was well we were earning decent decent by decent let me be very clear it was what about 12 to 20000 a month is what we were earning right and i consider that decent and so let me also tell the new entrepreneurs Yeah so the new entrepreneurs please don't expect that a decent is really like a 50 60000 no you may start with a 10 in fact look at it what is the best job that i was getting was 7 so compared to 7 i was getting 12 right so i thought i was doing much better although i didn't have any of those badges to say that i was working for times of india or i was working for a nice you know kind of an ad agency or something i i just don't think like you know other than that the money was okay for me it wasn't what could run the expenses but then he was working at that point of time right okay. so we decided let's continue with this but again because it was not something i liked i hit a roadblock that i got some problem in my thro- in my throat because i was sh- you know talking loudly with the kids and it was kind of frustrating me and i said this is not working out now i said let me try out a sandwich stall because i love sandwiches right and then so this is a process step by step then he said you need to figure out what you like see this whole kid thing is making the money the sport thing it's not my interest so you need to figure out what so then he taught me sit down on a board you write down what are the things you really like you know right. and right. then i said i like sandwiches you know so <laughs> it can be who doesn't bad. like sandwiches i'm crazy about sandwiches come on exactly yes yeah. you have to find out what you're crazy about it's not <laughs> like just like it's Correct. like you know you can go length and breadth to just eat in sandwich yeah it has to be something like that absolutely so i said sandwiches and uh, but somehow it just it just didn't work out in the sense Uh, the moment you get an idea for example right now okay i said let's make sandwiches and we are from that kind of a generation where we have watched so much of hollywood we've been to the bombays and whatever of india that the idea is okay i'll have this nice card with this fancy little cute dress and i'll have these grilled sandwiches and juices and one flashy light and all right that is a reality if you have an idea you already dream what it's supposed to look like and you are all lost in that you know but it doesn't sell it it doesn't sell <laughs> like that you know it just doesn't work like that and then i said oh let's start with the name this is what i've always been doing i want to do with the sandwich let's start with the name for the sandwich company you know so is the wrong path we all take and we did have issues between us because he said first get your product right you like sandwiches but can you make those sandwiches or whatever it is you know and then he kept saying make a business plan and i'm like i'm just not a plan person i have it all there in my head and you know all those impatience and everything um eventually then you know i had a fight and i said i'm never going to do the sandwich thing because uh, you're kind of pushing me and then we thought we reached a dead end and we said a change of place always does good to people so we decide, our life is very comfortable in goa I and mean, nobody wants to move out of goa yeah. but but then yeah. we realize that if we stay here this is where we are going to be we'll never kind of experiment to do something new and our brains are now set in that comfort zone so we decided to move out and we did a very short stint in uti we came to uti so it was like hills and then beach and then hills so and we <laughs> chose places at random it's these places maybe i watched a movie and i loved the hills or he had the idea of beaches lying down on a beach with a beer you know <laughs> and we said okay but and because we were so light we decided to move and actually this whole possum idea came at uti it's not that we thought of it when we traveled from goa to uti or from dehradun to goa we took rex our dog in the train with us right and then uh, this journey from goa to uti we did by road and we took our dog and we had tremendous difficulty finding a hotel which would allow us to stay with our pet right there is vivanta and there is all that but we can't afford that yeah right in that time at that time we you, couldn't you just afford. need to crash for a night and then you know you're like searching it for a hotel it does not make sense to spend money on things which does not actually matter at that point of time absolutely that's true yes so uh, while we were traveling from goa to uti uh we really could not find any place and i was literally like calling tens of hotels that you know i will give you a deposit i can 
um, you, you know, sure that he will not. So somehow we, you know, managed. So to, we just to used that. to take the car and go to a hotel. Yeah. and show them that this is the dog and he's so well behaved you can touch him and see and if you allow i'll pay you a thousand extra per night so we just try it like that and uh, we and if he says no we go to the next hotel he says no we go to the next hotel okay. so this is how we did we reached okay and then again in uti i was still thinking what do i do what do i do and uh, meanwhile i created a facebook profile i i wasn't on facebook before that and i created a facebook profile and i had put a picture of okay. us traveling with rex and somebody pinged me and asked me how did you do it so i explained this is how you do it and then they said uh, you know cutting the long story short then i had some more people asking how did you do it in the train and then i had someone asking you know i am already there and my job uh, doesn't give me leave would you please do that for me and i love traveling we both love traveling so they i said okay i will so you know and this person said that she would pay for my tickets Mm-hmm. and the dog's ticket and i was like wow somebody is going to pay me to travel and i just have to pick up the dog and go and even the stay is sorted because i was going to go and stay at her house right so i was so happy that let's take a break and i think i did uh, one short thing from i think bangalore to bombay or something like that i said okay i'll take the dog so we would do it in the train and the first time i did it myself Yeah. and then later he also started doing it so when we did it uh, it was quite a lot of fun i didn't make money and i didn't even know that this is my business or going to be my future uh-huh. business but i just did it like for for the travel and to travel with the dog and i was like let me do it it's no hassle at all and i didn't think i'm not making money i didn't think i'm going to waste time nothing of that sort i just traveled with the dogs and it was so nice that she put up a post and then i got some more people asking me will you do it and then you know very frankly i explain i can do it but while i'm away my own dog needs to be boarded somewhere and that costs me like a 500 a day so uh, then they said we are we are happy to pay that money as well <laughs> and then you know and the other client said why don't you charge for this so then that's where he came into the picture and he said since you know people do want it why don't you start a facebook page of your company that's the first step and we started a facebook page wherein we put out information how you travel with the dogs in the train and then whoever wants can inquire with us and we just started off there was no company name registered there was no <laughs> fancy idea there was nothing this was we had started only a facebook the work. page only, only a, a facebook, facebook page the first year we were just operating out of a facebook page all the requests coming in through that and uh, we were making decent money we were at least you know covering up our costs so and then uh, again the decent is less than 10000 here yeah <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know something. Actually, something that, that you make, I, yeah, correct. Out of your own buck, even one buck is is as good as ten thousand bucks you get as a you know. I I can totally understand. Yeah, please. please But then please. at that time, uh, I was still working, uh, you know, with the other firm, so we had that kind of backup, and mm. uh, so that we could manage, you know, the rest of our expenses that were like rent and everything. So uh, yeah, and then uh, we finally took the plunge. I said, you know, let's just register the company, let's get it all sorted, and that was, I think, one of the better parts that we did. You know, uh, to register the firm uh, as a private limited because, uh, of course, we wanted to grow bigger. You know, <laughs> we still had that dream, right? That we'll we'll become entrepreneurs and we'll have investors and we'll have stocks and we'll be on the. What what's that eating or some kind of a magazine? You know? <laughs> so basically, but then we are here. We are. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's, it's you know what basically what I would say it's a happy accident which happened which actually turned your desires around to start something right. 